Is that lighting too dramatic? I think it's, I think it's a little too dramatic for this particular video. It's the battle between good and evil. I don't know what it is, but I struggle with the lighting in here. So this video is going to be a rant video. I guess you would call it. I don't know if this is a rant video, but um, the way that I look at this video or the way that I want to portray this video is a precursor to future things that are going to be said on this channel and future things that are going to be done on this channel. Because otherwise, if I don't, how, you know, how do I put this? If I don't put this video up first, I'm going to probably have more, a lot more of the same conversations that I've already had because this topic, which is the topic of edge retention testing and testing knives in general and testing different steel types is probably, it has to be one of the most controversial subjects on YouTube other than maybe knife sharpening. So last week I made a couple of knives. I made a knife out of A2 tool steel and CPM M4. These were made specifically for testing. And I was halfway through making a video about that. I was literally halfway through the editing process making a video about that testing and making these blades when I realized that I had to make a video explaining myself because a good portion of that video is me testing these blades. And my testing methods are very different from just about every other YouTuber out there and their testing process. If you type in knife testing on YouTube, knife testing on YouTube, you're gonna see really two main things. You're gonna see cardboard testing, you're gonna see knife, well, you're gonna see three things. You're gonna see cardboard testing, you're gonna see uh, rope testing, and you're gonna see knife destruction testing. For me, I don't do any of that, really. Um, the cardboard testing uh, is done, there's a couple channels out there who do it really well. Uh, one of those is Steve from Super Steel Steve. Go check that channel out. It's uh, gonna be in the description below. The other channel is Pete from Cedric and Ada. Most of you guys probably know who Pete is. He does the rope testing, uh, cutting paper. Both of those guys have tested tons and tons of knife steels. Now, I'm not saying that that kind of testing is, uh, is not valid. That's a completely valid form of testing, both of them, and they are giving excellent data points um, with the equipment that they have access to. And I actually think that their testing, what they're doing is more accurate than, <laughs> pretty much all of the sci the so-called scientific testing out there. But for me, I'm a knife maker, right? I make knives, I make knives out of different types of steel and that type of testing, it doesn't really tell me much. And I don't put a whole lot of weight behind that type of testing. Now I've done cardboard tests before and I've done rope cutting tests before. Both of them are on this YouTube channel and I've done it before in the past that I haven't made videos on. I still do cardboard testing now. I'm just not a, uh, I'm not a counter. I don't sit there and count how many number of feet that I cut of cardboard out of CPM M4 and then go test A2 and all that kind of stuff. And the reason behind that is because for me, uh, that type of testing, it does not tell me a whole lot about the style of knives that I make. Let me give you an example here. The, the analogy that, that kind of goes around the knife community is the car analogy. You're not gonna go out and buy yourself a $250,000 Ferrari and then drive it up and down the beach 100 times at 100 miles an hour. Most likely that Ferrari is not even gonna make it to the beach because the second that that, the, that that Ferrari touches the sand, it's gonna get stuck and people are gonna pull out their camera phones and take pictures of the idiot who got his Ferrari stuck on the beach. On the flip side, you're not gonna get into a lifted Chevy pickup with 42s on it and take it to the racetrack and go around the racetrack at 100 miles an hour expecting to get anywhere. You know, people are gonna do the same thing. They're gonna pull out their camera and be like, look at this joker driving around a lifted Chevy with 42s on it thinking he's going super fast around the racetrack. They're both vehicles, they're both knives, but each knife and each vehicle is designed for a very specific purpose. You know, the same thing uh, happens in the knife world. I'm not gonna go out and take a chef's knife that has been ground to six thousandths behind the edge and take it out into the woods and expect to get very far with it. I'm not going to take a woods knife into the kitchen and expect it to uh, dice up an onion or a tomato at lightning speed. It might physically do it. I might be able to baby the chef's knife along in the woods, get um, you know, do a little bit of work with it, but it's not gonna be a very pleasant experience in either direction. You have two different knives that are designed for two different very specific purposes. 
Now the cardboard testing and the rope testing thing, it's kind of like taking the Ferrari and the pickup truck, putting them on a drag strip and seeing who gets to the end first and then saying that whoever gets to the end first is clearly the better vehicle or clearly the better knife steel. And again, that doesn't really tell me a whole lot. It tells me that, yeah, the Ferrari's faster on a drag strip. Um, yeah, a certain knife steel might be, uh, a certain knife steel with a certain geometry might cut more cardboard, but what happens if I take that same knife with laser thin geometry um, that's left super, super hard and put it into a piece of super hard, super dense hickory or some of the other super hard woods? A lot of times if you do that, you will get edge chipping. Not this type of edge chipping. This is from th uh, something completely different, but you will get some sort of edge chipping going on if the knife is hard. If the knife is not super hard, you will roll the edge. You have, <laughs> you, you've got two different geometries on two different blades made from the same steel. One geometry might hold up doing this type of stuff in knotted hickory. The other type, is going to outcut it in doing things like cardboard. Um, you put a steeper geometry on a knife, it's going to cut more cardboard and remain sharp longer most of the time. There's more, uh, there's more that goes into this than I'm kind of getting into in this video, but um, basically a knife with steeper geometry cuts better. The type of knives that I design, which are woodworking type of knives, they're not designed to cut cardboard. I have to make sure that this apex holds up when someone gets this knife into a piece of wood and twists it like this. This knife is not designed to cut like this. Nobody cuts wood like this. So I have to put the geometry on this knife to stabilize that apex. Because again, if I put too steep of a geometry on here, it might cut cardboard great. You might get better edge retention out of it doing everyday tasks. But when it goes into a piece of wood like this, it any kind of twisting motion happens, you can break that real fine apex off and get microchipping and that affects edge retention. Just because one, uh, one vehicle makes it to the end of the drag strip faster than the other one doesn't mean that that's a better vehicle. It means that it's a better vehicle for that purpose. But how about we have the same drag race in a cornfield? Who's gonna win then? Well, the truck's gonna win. So we've got to test knives. In my opinion, you have to test knives how they were designed to be used. You can't um, just throw one test out there, like a cardboard test or a rope cutting test, or um, you know a stab into a piece of metal test, and say that that knife, because it passed that particular test, is clearly the better knife. Um, come on guys, use knives how they're designed to be used. Um, you know, I've seen this so many times on other YouTube channels where they're taking a knife and they're doing, you know, paint can stabs or, you know, driving it into a piece of wood with a hammer and then cranking on it and the tip breaks off and it's like, oh, this knife passed and this knife didn't. Well, you know, that's not how the knives were designed to be used. I can make a knife out of M4 that is going to be a wicked, wicked woods knife if it's used properly. It's gonna hold an edge forever in wood. You'll not have any edge problems. But if I sit there with a hammer and hammer that into a piece of wood and go like this, this is gonna happen, right? Let's pretend this is a piece of 1084. I can do the same thing. I can put um, a good edge geometry on here. It's not gonna last nearly as long as the M4 is if this was 1080. However, I can put a temper on here so that it will pass the, snip, the, the tip, the snip pass test, <laughs> the tip snap test, that's hard to say. I can make a knife out of 1080 that I can hammer into a piece of wood and you're not gonna break it. You'll probably break your hand before you break the uh, before you break the steel. Now, this knife right here, CPM M4, the reason the tips broke off of it is because I put it into a vise and I tried to straighten it. M4 is a very good steel for remaining in the condition it is in out of heat treat. M4 does not like to be moved into a position that it's not already in. If you do that, you'll snap the blade. 1084, I can put a temper or I can put a, a heat treatment on this to where I can put this into a vise and bend it to 45, 60 degrees, let go of it and it'll spring right back to perfectly straight. 
You cannot do that with M4. Does that mean that M4 is an inferior steel to 1084? No, it just means that if I want a knife that I can use and abuse and pry it on stuff with, I'm gonna make it out of 1084 and put the correct heat treatment on that knife. If I want a knife that's gonna cut all day in wood and it's gonna be used how it was originally designed to be used, which is cut wood, I'm gonna make it out of M4 and put the correct geometry on the blade and the correct heat treatment so that it will do that. Sorry, my battery died. So hopefully the takeaway from this video is that a knife is not a knife is not a knife. There are different knives out there for different purposes and there's different tests designed for different styles of knife. When you're doing any kind of testing, when you're doing edge retention testing or when you're testing knives in general, my opinion, you have to test the knife for what it was designed to be used for. Once you start throwing other things into the mix, you can start to muddy the waters and it can be kind of confusing. So I feel like I need to clarify that statement there real quick. What I mean by muddy the waters is not that it provides a bad data point. Uh, what I mean is that if you take a chef's knife and do a tip strength bend test with it by hammering it into a piece of hardwood, the chef's knife is probably not going to pass. It's not really a relevant data point, if that makes sense. And again, back to the car analogy, it doesn't make sense to do a uh, cornfield quarter mile drag test in a Ferrari. It's just an irrelevant data point that no one really cares about because you're taking something that is not designed to be off-roaded through a cornfield and attempting to do something with it that it just wasn't designed for. And to the general consumer who may not be a knife person, but they do like knives, but they might not get into the nitty gritty knife geek stuff like we do, obviously the knife that hacked through the metal stop sign is the superior knife to the knife that broke in three pieces when it attempted the same thing. So this is where uh, the, the whole muddy the waters thing can kind of come into play. So hopefully that clears things up. When we're talking about cardboard testing or rope testing or any other type of uh, the more scientific testing where we're cutting the exact number of uh, cuts that are made, the exact number of feet that are made before um, you stop cutting something, whether it's paper or shaving or whatever it is, um, those tests have their place. There's a reason that they're done, but they're not a black and white test. They're not a test that um, tells you that steel A is clearly better than steel B. And I wanna make sure that that is understood going forward because um, again, I'm gonna be saying certain things in future videos that are probably not gonna make a whole lot of sense to some of you about steels like M4 and about steels um, A2, O1, uh, 154 CM. There's gonna be some other steels coming up on this channel that we're gonna be working with. And again, it's probably not gonna make a whole lot of sense unless you understand this basic, uh, you know, the, the basics of knife testing. So hopefully in upcoming videos, I don't get, you know, bombarded with a bunch of hate comments from uh, the uh, edge retention uh, guys who are saying that my testing is invalid because it's non-scientific and I don't know what I'm talking about. The nice thing is that you can go out and do all of this stuff for yourself. And go get yourself a heat treating oven, get some 1084, get some A2, get some uh, M M4, whatever, whatever knife I'm holding up. Go get some, run a couple heat treatments on it, and uh, do all this testing for yourself. And maybe you'll end up coming to the same conclusion I did. Maybe you'll come up with a different conclusion. Maybe you'll find some new type of heat treating that exists that I haven't discovered yet. But you can go out and do all this stuff for yourself. What I'm saying is uh, simply based on my own experiences. If you disagree with the way that I test my blades, go out and do it for yourself. And uh, I would be interested in hearing your results, uh, hearing what your experiences are, because the more information that we have out there on any of this is more information out there. It's just, uh, it's just more data that we can use to come to hopefully a better conclusion, make a better knife with better geometry that's just gonna cut better. So there's my, uh, so there's my rant. There's my, uh, I haven't done one of these, I don't think. A rant. Have I done rants before? But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will try and get back to as many of you as I can. It's been hard here lately. Um, but I still read all the comments. So leave me a comment below. I love reading them. I really do. If you disagree with me, that's completely fine. I'd still like to know what your thoughts are. Thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button if you liked it. Hit the dislike button if you didn't like it. And we'll see you in the next video, which will hopefully be soon.